All right, so here we are. This is the grand finale. I decided to piece this one in. I didn't realize we were gonna spend that much time on this thing. But again, I've never used those. I was curious how they work. You probably want to know as well. Uh, I'm not sure if I told you the blades on that one, uh, they would be, you get 10 for $5.60. I feel like that would probably last longer than a traditional one, but uh, we'll, we'll see. Now, this is something I've had for quite a while. It's kind of been hard not to make a video on it. It was super hard for me not to take this thing out and use it. <laughs> but uh, my thoughts are now I've got tons and tons of screws uh, in a project we're working on on the truck, and I can use this possibly for reassembly, uh, if that's the route we decide to go. And it's also the reason that we have the bit of things handy. So what I'm going to do is drop this thing down. It was $24.31, which when you see it, I think it's a pretty good buy. And again, that's not a sale price. That's not tool of the day. That's just like regular MSRP. If you see the yellow and the black, you're probably thinking Philo. And I'd hate to disappoint you, but you're exactly right. <laughs> so, uh, right here, this is what it is. That's the Philo Organics handle that everyone should be familiar with. Anyone that's had one probably loves it. And uh, it says made in Germany here. It's the Organics K handle 4389940. And uh, then on this side, you got a, a better look at it. Now, when this thing first came out, I was super geeked about it. I think I saw it on Philo's website and or Instagram feed, I believe. And my thing was, I was like, hey, you know, KC Tool, when can we get this sucker? And uh, Chris Cass, Tool Aficionado, if you've uh, never heard of his channel, he's kind of like super into the uh, Japanese stuff. He's made a couple of trips. Wow, that thing's sharp. <laughs> That's nice. Uh, he's made a couple of trips over to Japan. He's uh, kind of a, a pretty good source for information on Japanese specific stuff. And uh, he said that this design looked really, really similar to him. And I can't remember, because again, this was a couple months ago, uh, what company, but he pinned out a company and it looks just like that. Whether it's the same thing or not, I don't know for certain. I would be inclined to say it probably is, because again, Philo is pretty reasonable on their prices, especially compared to, you know, like Stavilla and Hazet and everything. But uh, I feel like something like this, if it truly came from Germany, we wouldn't be looking at 2431 uh, we'd be looking at maybe a really good buy, just shy of 50 bucks, likely more than that. Don't hold me to that, but just based on what I've seen, what I've bought, what I've brought in, what I've monitored online uh, the last couple of years, that's kind of where I would see the price point, even at a really good buy. And, uh, you know, you got to think, like, if you come in and you get an ergonics or something from Philo, and then you add, you know, a hex bolster, uh, and then you add a striking cap, and then we come in and we add, you know, like a screw holding function. Like you can get to the point where you're spending 23 bucks for a Philo driver. That's usually got a ton of cool features and specialized stuff to it. But uh, for this to just be right in that same sub $25 price point, I don't know. I'm inclined to say Taiwan. I believe that's where the company was that he believed it to be. Uh, you should probably go back on Instagram. If you don't follow me on Instagram, that's a great reason to. You can probably go find it yourself. But uh, if you didn't know, if you hadn't pieced it together as I've rambled on, take the beloved Philo Ergonics, all right, uh, trademark handle here, black and yellow color scheme, and then come up top and put this on the end of it, okay? This is uh, what I'm hoping to be a pretty sweet setup. So basically the way this thing works is you've got two key features here, all right? You have, if you haven't figured it out, by this component here, it's got rotation, rotation, and center. So this is a ratcheting screwdriver, right? Right now it's locked up. It's just gonna function as a standard driver. If we come over here, we've got a ratcheting screwdriver. And if we come this way, we've got a ratcheting screwdriver. Uh, the way this one's gonna work, it's not confined to a singular bit. It's going to be a bit holder. So that's a cool feature. Uh, they do sell this in their awesome now, which I really, really do like the Philo Strong Boxes, little yellow and black ones. I think I brought one in way, way back in the day. Uh, it's held up just fine so far, uh, but they outfit this with a whole host of different bits and, you know, assortments of bits and quantities of bits. So you can go from like 24 bucks, you know, like really, really cheap, like stocking stuffer type price points to, I think, around 
50, 75, 100, depending on what bits and what quantities you get of them. Uh, but again, if you do want this to be relegated to a case and you want to have all of the bits specialized, specific, packed out just the way you want them, that's still a great value for it. Uh, assuming the tool doesn't suck, which I'm hoping it doesn't. But the other thing, okay, so we ratchet, we're a bit holder, but what is this thing doing here? Well, I don't know, let's press it, nothing seems to happen. Well, if we come in, check it out. We can lock it in, so now we are 90 degrees, basically. If I come in, the next adjustment point is here, so 45. We come in, we're straight up. Take a pick, probably 45, right? 135, whatever you want to call it. And then here, full 180 or the 90 degrees. So essentially, across the horizon, uh, you can go from east to the west, just like the sun. And at this price point, if this thing is decent, I'm going to be pretty happy. You can get a look at the gears here. Uh, it is held in place. If you ever need to tighten that up, it is a Torx fastener. I'm thinking that's 25. Don't hold me to that. It might be a 27. <laughs> that's, uh, what I grabbed, which where is it? This is our smart handle, right? I'll use that as a T-handle sometimes. And I also snagged some bits, which... What did I do with them? Becomes the question of the hour now. And I honestly don't know. So that's, uh, there they are. They're sitting on top of a pair of pliers. So, I don't think this is going to work, but I wasn't sure. That is definitely not going to happen. Um, this one, though, I want to see. If you recall, for our smart handles and uh, everything, I set it up with this sucker, which is just basically going to serve as a really long extension because that's designed for like a bit holder or an impact type of a setup. But let's come in first with a KC tool stamped bit of thanks from Philo and put this sucker in. Again, I don't know if this is a magnet or a clip or if we retract. Okay, so the way that works is you pull down and then that lets it uh, come in and out. So right here you're just going to fall out, but if we come in and we pull down, it seats Fairly positive locking. It's not the most secure thing, but again, I don't think we're going to have any issues with that. And so right now, again, standard screwdriver mode, right? If we just come in, we want to tighten, we want to loosen, we do whatever we want. If we do this, that feels more like a... Uh, Taiwan gear to me, you know, based on my ratcheting screwdrivers of the past. I want to say this is a 60 tooth mechanism. <laughs> Don't again hold me to that. But uh, I'm excited about this thing. I actually am. Again, I don't care the country of origin, the fact that this is here and it's a Philo Ergonics handle and it's not just straight up, but we can go 45 and 90, makes this thing super versatile and the price point is absurdly low. Uh, I figured this was gonna be like one of those things that was way, way more money than it turned out to cost. So um, my thoughts were I wanted to get it like this. I have plenty of bits I kind of have set up with what I want to use and do use and I could evaluate it that way. And then if I want to, uh, this could be something you could outfit this, you know, in your mobile setup. You could put it in your, you know, trunk, your glove box, your console, under the rear seat, whatever. Uh, and if you had it in their strong box, minimal space taken up and a huge assortment of bits. So, I mean, this could become a huge, huge uh, pickup for some of you. But uh, case in point, let's just go full 90 here, right? So let's say we're working tight quarters on the dash or something since I have that on my mind. And that's a space saver, that's a back saver, that's a painful, you know, like, I uh, got crud under my uh, shoulder blade as I'm draped in the floorboard saver. Uh, I am excited about this thing. Now, does it eject? No. But we do simply drop down and release. Now, I'm thinking this will work, but I don't know for sure. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> So what we just did, and I gotta say that uh, sort of helps balance it. Uh, one knock right off the bat on this, you can't say anything really bad about the handle, uh, but the head, it makes this a very, very top heavy driver. Now that said, this is significantly better than the ratcheting screwdrivers I have, which I'll tell you right now, they're cheap ones. Uh, not necessarily from Harbor Freight, but of that variety. Uh, they, you know, have like the little rubber sleeve around the shaft that holds six different bits. Look what we just did though. We made this thing about 12 and a half inches long and this is a quarter drive extension from our Philo smart handle and guess what that means? I can put a deep socket on here 
and we're going to be going like what let's check the length here uh, back to the bit is going to be right at about five we'll say five and a half so if we were to stick on a deep socket we basically have eight inches of clearance there uh, that would work really good for the front dash screws on the truck <laughs> and, uh, coming up underneath the dash like I'm specifically thinking of like the uh, charger if I 90 degree this sucker okay like if you do say run into the center console or the floor pan or something where you would typically be like well crud you know this is perfect and I don't have an extension shorter than this go 45 <laughs> okay uh, if it's easier if you have trouble staying in the fastener you know at that length come up here and do this now the beauty of this is all those bits that we have like for the uh, specifically that we brought in for the Vera, Vera Turbo uh, that we have for the smart handle they're gonna plug and play now I do wanna hit you with this before we go this works from the smart handle line right if it's a double sided bit like this this sadly doesn't have the throat to swallow our Phillips here so we could you know use the slotted end on this so you would have to get you know bits of this design I mean right here okay uh, let's get yellow because it's a uh, philo color it's not gonna show you what I'm doing but you're gonna you're gonna love it when you see it buddy so let's say that uh, you're you're doing a fuel system for a buddy this Labor Day right or you're upgrading your pump and uh, you're putting three eighths or half inch or dash six dash eight maybe dash ten maybe you're going racing but guess what any of the lines that you use what do they have well they have clamps so uh, when you come in you know if, if you're like me that means that you have quarter and five sixteenths nut drivers specifically uh, for fuel hose clamps right does it work with Vihaz nut setters? Well, let's find out. The answer is yes, it does. <laughs> so this thing is, uh, this is super cool. I, I debated doing a standalone on this. I hadn't planned any of this out. Uh, I'm just having a fantastic time over here on Labor Day. So check this out, man. I mean, do you know how cool that is? And a lot of times underneath a car, granted, if you have a lift, it may not be an issue. But if you're like me, I don't have a lift, okay? I'm on the ground on a creeper on a foam mat on cardboard whatever and I've got the car jacked up and not like I can put them a mile in the air right so I could come in and if I've got an angle of attack here on some of those clamps and what the beauty with hose clamps is right you can angle them you don't have to have them all you know squared up at 90 if your service angle is right here do it if you want them squared up up top come in at 90 degrees and look at this clearance right so I could go over canister filters I could go over frame rail mounted pumps anything uh, this thing is uh, <laughs> it's pretty cool I'm just gonna leave it at that so uh, I might grab some Vera bits just to show you different lengths real quick all right some of you brand people might be upset about this because you know it's a good or L box which these are cheap you know they're like 10 bucks or so uh, this is where I put the turbo again I think I included that in the video but uh, all of these bits that we brought in again I styled this specifically which didn't I get a t25 I think I did uh, so let's be practical dun, 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 right there so these 89 millimeter bits that we have for the turbo and the Verity handle check this out okay we're gonna come in we're gonna release our VHA nut driver uh, first thing first Okay, so that is bigger than T25. I thought it looked like it would be. Uh, maybe it's a 30. But T25 stuff, huh? Gotta gotta deal with that. There's what an 89 millimeter bit looks like in this sucker. This is a killer setup. Like, uh, I wish it was really hard for me not to open this. One of the reasons I didn't uh, is I have used exclusively. Uh, this is something some of you might want to watch the Ram Revival for, but exclusively in the Ram Revival on the dash stuff, I've made sure to just use a Viha Micro Finish number two. Standard, you know, not, you know, striking cap or anything. Uh, I love that driver. Uh, the tip still looks immaculate, and I mean, this is a small area of the dash, and uh, yeah, I'm talking hundreds of screws. And uh, I started to do like a test on it, but then I opted to kind of do like a standardized bench based one. That one is not one that I had for testing. That's one that I bought so I could actually use something nice and not just have to have it sit around waiting to test it, if you will. But uh, check this out. If we were to come in here with a Ghidorah L box, right? 
it doesn't necessarily fit here. We could have the rails come across there, but if you do this, <laughs> oh yeah, buddy, get that out of my way. Mm -hmm. Does it clear? Of course it does. Sweet. Now that is a killer setup. Now that's something else you could do. Uh, you could come in here and if you were so inclined, you wanted to pick up an L box uh, specifically for the Philo because you loved it, but you didn't want their strong box because you have tons and tons of bits. If you don't have the bits, strongly consider that because I'm loving this so far. Granted, I suppose we should use it before we like just keep the praise on it, right? But uh, right here, if I get the fancy bits and everything, we <laughs> can just retract that and get this sucker going. Oh, that's so nice. So yeah, this turns out to be an awesome purchase for me. Uh, I could not be, uh, I don't believe, more pleased with it. <laughs> and, uh, oh, buddy, we're going to have some fun there. Uh, but when I do reassemble the dash, I think I'm going to make a point to specifically use this guy. Because again, all of those screws that I've been showing you, for the most part, there's a couple of regulars. Uh, but these, I want to say they're 7 millimeter heads. Might be 8, but 7 or 8 millimeter heads on these. So this sucker right here comes in handy if I want to use it. Uh, if we want to just stick to the number 2 Phillips aspects. Whatever we want to do, we can do it. And I'll try to use this. Maybe we can... The turbo is very hard to find, like, usage for, you know, like, I know a few things it's good at, but, like, just everyday run-of-the-mill stuff, it's kind of like, yeah, <laughs> you know, uh, but it's still comically fun to use when I have gotten to do so, and I have, spoiler alert, something that, between the turbo and this, would also fall into this category that we might use in the reassembly phase, and I'm pretty excited to check that thing out. Also of note, this was ridiculously sharp when we cut everything, so I'm stoked with that. We have one more thing to do, and uh, let's just uh, do this the simplest way, what most of you are going to have, which is the regular bit. We'll get the bit of things in place. We got to... There's something in there. Surely there's at least one blade. That would just be cruel. I suppose I should show this to you, too. Now, as with the turbo, I would not come in and uh, use this to apply tons of force. If you've got something like torque down, maybe break it free and then use the ratcheting screwdriver. Uh, keep in mind, you know, once you hit it like a certain friction point, the ratcheting mechanism is useless on a screwdriver. That's why it's nice with this. You can go back to standard. But uh, let's see if I can. Thought I had it all threaded out. Apparently not. It's always a longer screw than you would think in these. And there we go. Boom, we got at least one. <laughs> Looks like there may be a couple for us. And these do look to be standard, as best I can tell. And I think we got... They sent three. And uh, the hardest part of this might actually be getting that out. Alright. Oh, they're so oily. So sticky together <laughs> Let's uh, slide that sucker in. Now, I'm going to just go ahead and leave this in that sort of like paraffin stuff uh, and tuck her back in there. Wipe the oil on my jeans because that's why we wear we wear jeans, not shorts. We have more space to wipe stuff, you know. And uh, come in right here, structure this back like so. And so this is what you're stuck with. When you don't have a retractable blade, you've literally got half of it sticking out. And uh, let's get this guy going here. We got to go this direction now. So we're going to come in. The ratcheting mechanism will only again be applicable as we get this thing tight, like right there, you know. Then it's super nice and handy. Initial bench test. I love this thing. Uh, it is absurdly top heavy. Don't, you know, think this is like a wonder tool. You know, it's not like perfectly balanced and everything. But the bottom line, the Philo Ergonics, if you've used their handle, it's one of the best out there. Super comfortable. If you've never used it, what better time to try it uh, than with a ratcheting screwdriver? The thing I love best about that is the six position. I guess it's five positions, right? So you got 90 on both sides, you got 45, and you got dead middle. If we take ratcheting out of the scenario, you know, it adds even more versatility. It's almost like 12 tools in one. <laughs> but uh, this thing right here, this is lightweight, especially after having to hold that thing in my hands. And I do like the knurling. I kind of wish that the knurling would go over the top and bottom. I say that about everything. Uh, I realize that's the part line right there, and it might not be practical to you. Uh, but with the glove, there's significantly better grip, as you would expect. 
Again, shout out to Alpha Gloves. Link for that always down below. But uh, you know what? I'm a I'm a bit of a crazy guy, and I just want that squared up, just like so. <laughs> Let's come in and make this thing as square as we can. Perfect. I don't know if you're like me, but that thing. It's got to square up one way or the other, or it's just going to sit there and bother you. So uh, there's our Picard. Let's see. We've got the, the Philo bag here. So that Picard with the breakaway blade cut really well. Let's see what this brand new blade does. Cuts just as good. Uh, that one might actually have cut better. <laughs> but, uh, this turned out to be quite uh, quite the lengthy little expedition here for us, did it not? I had no idea that it would. I thought this would be like a stupid fast one. Um, Phone call always screws me up. I'm not going to lie about that. Uh, sort of lose track of what we were doing. But uh, we got the Picard dust mask. We got these two relics from the past tool hauls. We got our 90 degree offset style villa pick. We also got this tiny little guy here, which I want to... Let's do the comparison. No hanging hole in this one, which is kind of unfortunate. That said, I've been putting these in VHA stands. Uh, but this one... Like, it's really well done. You can see the texture on it. You can see the silk screening of the part number. Not that that's a huge deal. Same barcode. I know people hate this. Uh, but, like, right here, like, just the ability to grip this in kind of a... It's almost like a nut. You know, rounded here, but, you know, it's like a hex six-sided type of a deal. Uh, and the texture is just wonderful. This is more like just uh, put it in the palm of your hand and go. It's kind of like the vessel driver design. Again, honestly does... If I just held this like this, you would think that we had like a Christmas light bulb. <laughs> but, uh, I think I personally prefer this style. I realize this handle would have been scaled down. Uh, it probably just wasn't practical. And again, at the price point of like three bucks, I'm not really going to complain at all because the business end here is what we care about. So, uh, but yeah, just, you know, what seems like a small and innocent tool haul, but we got some cool stuff and I'm, uh, I'm really happy with it. So. Uh, like I said, I'm I'm super geeked about that screwdriver. I wish I would have opened it up. But you saw it. I did not let myself open that one. I kept it sealed. I mean, this is still the staples from Philo or KC Tool intact. We cut it there. You were right there with me when we did it. So I held out. Sometimes I can't. You know, like this I wanted to try out. Uh, I had to use this pick. It was, again, a lifesaver. It saved me so much time and frustration and cuts and everything. <laughs> but uh, anyway, I'm going to quit rambling. I'm going to get back to sanding some rust, probably go make myself supper. Uh, this was Labor Day. I've got to go to work at uh, 6.30 tomorrow, a.m., of course, and I'll probably leave around 7, 7.30. And there's also, you know, the cold front coming in where we go from, you know, like probably 95 right now to... I don't know, 40s with a north wind and a chance of flurries. So uh, that's in September in Amarillo. Great times. But uh, as much as I like getting off of work, you know, like on a holiday like Labor Day or, you know, Independence Day, something like that, it just seems like any time you do that, then you just get slammed the next day. Uh, so I think I've got uh, motors coming in, uh, Home Depot. I've got a big pallet order, and I'm afraid it was screwed up at the pro desk. It might all be pressure treated instead of just the 4x4s. <laughs> and, uh, seems like there's another delivery that I think is coming. And then uh, there's two customers I know of, one coming to pick up, one coming to drop off. And I think a lot of other things I'm forgetting, but, uh, you know, it is, it is what it is. So that said, I am, I am beyond geeked about this thing. I can't wait to actually put it into use. So I did get it dirty. I thought these were clean. I'd, I'd been working on kind of wiping them down so I could get them back to functionality. But, uh, anyway, like I said, the thumb, the nail is finally back. I've been trimming it. Uh, it, like this one where you can like pull back and you don't see anything. This one you pull back and it's like, well, I could probably rip that off if I wanted to. And that's why I'm still in the gloves when I'm working. <laughs> and, uh, also to keep try and keep like metal and rust and you know uh, all that kind of crud from going under the thumbnail because it seems to do that quite a bit. But uh, it's it's there and uh, it works. It's just not quite like it was. But hey, uh, at least I still have a thumb, right? And that's that's the way I'm going to look at it. So uh, on that note, let me know what do you think of all this stuff. Have you tried the Philo? If not, are you going to pick one up? Fixed blade breakaway blade retractable blade or knife what do you prefer and why do you also use awls and picks if so what do you think of the mini ones and uh past that like i said i'm gonna go sand some rust so i do hope you enjoyed hope you learned a little something had some fun and uh i am uh, like i said just 
really stupidly excited about this. So, uh, as always, new videos Saturday. I've usually got automotive content or something else coming out on Wednesday. Try to cycle the KC tool hauls where we have you know one every other Saturday and then something plugged in on the Saturday between. But it should be tool related as all goes well and according to plan, which sometimes does not. But uh, if you haven't subscribed, I encourage you to do so if you like what you're seeing here. Uh, also, you can find us Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, all three at Lone Star Mopars. But with that said, I'm going to get back to work, and I will catch you back here for more action from the shop.